Please welcome Matthew McClellan, a partnership manager, Southeast Asia from Dot Digital. Thanks very much, Stephanie. Uh, welcome everyone and thank you for the time today. Uh, we'll be going through merchant success stories and a few other elements, but I'll be guiding you through a few elements and kind of the, the situation we see ourselves in and how we are as merchants, developers, and those within the Magento community really adapting to the changing scenarios we face all across Southeast Asia and Indonesia. So hopefully my screen is sharing okay now. That should have come through. So with regards to kind of the, the situation we kind of see ourselves in, you know, the world temporarily being closed in a lot of fashion when it comes to retail, retail operations, and elements that we kind of took for somewhat granted in how we shop, how we experience, and how we work with uh, our customers uh, across different channels and different ecosystems. One of the things that um, I started my career off as is actually working for a bed retailer. And retail as itself was where it stood back then, uh, some 15 odd years ago. Very much the shopping experience was come in, try the product, lie down, sit, have a salesperson go through how this product would work and use terminology like latex, foam, memory foam, pocket sprung, sprung to define or give you an idea of what's the right product for you. And when we look back at kind of that time of going into a physical store and trying all these products out, we're getting to the point where the terminology that's used and how we do it, actually more of the research is now done online. We ourselves, when I went to shop for a mattress not six, seven months ago, <clears throat> I was actually quite fortunate to have three years experience within that industry and still found it quite baffling and overwhelming how much terminology or jargon was used and been doing so, you know, the salesperson or the people within the physical stores were there to help and educate me. When in fact, most of the time I spent jumping up and down, bouncing on the bed just to see, hey, how does this feel? How is it going to work for me? By testing and feeling and touching this product, we finally settled on one and waited for the responses from the salespeople that we had um, uh, kind of engaged with. We didn't get any. Such was the case, you know, seven, eight, 12, 18 months ago that from a retail operations perspective, we were very fortunate that mall stores were full of people, full of engaging customers. And we had that footfall of leads or people to, to kind of buy our products. And then things changed. Retail operations saw an 80-90% decline. We ourselves looked at how this was going to impact us from a business perspective as we couldn't, as retailers, deliver the same numbers to our, uh, obviously, shareholders that we had done previously. Now, where we looked from that retail operation, that decline that we saw, it really comes down to then where did those customers go? We still had to buy products. And as has been the rise over the last many, many years, obviously since uh, for the last 21 years of different ways in which we consume, different ways in which we consume information. Previously it was televisions or newspapers, but now there's a variety of different video and imagery platforms that people consume and use to have conversations about products and things that they're interested in. These social communities are there to drive us as consumers, to educate us on the products that we want to buy. And if we look at obviously just in Indonesia with 70% of the population utilizing Facebook and other of those channels, that social community is where we actually drive <clears throat> at that decision-making process. And something I found here, which I absolutely loved and found really interesting was the percentage of mobile connections to the population. And in, Indonesia is a beautiful place and it has such a high proportion of individuals that are connected. And they're so well connected, there's more connections than the actual individuals within the population. And this shows the reliance on that connectability and that ability to get that social peer communication back and forth. As this, as I mentioned, is where we make those connections and having those connections between our individuals to talk about, hey, I've seen this product, this is something uh, of interest to you. 
this is something of interest to me. Being able to recommend to each other through that social networking allows us to step away from what was or is that salesperson approach that we go somewhere where someone sells to us what we want. Nowadays, we as a community come with our friends, family and peers and even our influencers to decide ourselves before going into a physical store or buying online what that product is that we want or need and which ones satisfy our needs and requirements. And so as we kind of look with the light coming at the end of the tunnel, as most regions and, and most countries are seeing a positive growth um, in a variety of the um, restrictions being lifted, we look to see over the last 18, 24 months, where has retail gone? Retail, you know, when preparing for this presentation, you know, I had a lot of things around retail is dead. Retail isn't dead. The idea of retail in what we saw it in, where our education, our awareness, our discovery phase is by going to a mall and maybe going to three or four stores. This is being done online. This is being done in communities. This is being on brand.com websites and marketplaces and places in which we can exchange and free exchange ideas between those that we see as influencing that decision or helping us to make our own mind up. And it was a few months ago, I actually sat down with some retailers, um, uh, larger retailers or conglomerates in the Philippines, along with Adobe. One that we wanted to talk to them about was specifically how their world was changing. And after the back of this, a caricaturist put this together, which is a summation of some of the elements and strategies and issues that those merchants had faced themselves. What was it that they were trying to do from a retailer perspective to grow, to develop, and to accelerate their digital transformation strategy? A lot of them came across, you know, the kind of key things that we hear time and time again, people, process, technology. I want that personalized experience. My customers, I want them to know who we are, what we do, and I want them to continually buy from us. You know, challenges that as developers, you know, we see that as, you know, the requirements coming in from merchants. Merchants, that's what we're talking about to the people that help us build our e-commerce journey. But the transformation that most of them took because of the kind of knee-jerk reaction that they had to take to recover ultimately a kind of steep decline and sharp decline in revenue was to invest further within marketplaces. And no matter which country you are or all around the world, but more predominantly here in Southeast Asia, and especially here in Indonesia and across Malaysia, Singapore, we've got a number of different marketplaces that allow us to connect all our products to a vast group of individuals. Within that, we're allowed, we can have our products sold, delivered. That last mile delivery is fantastic. Being able to have that text message, I've got one coming over uh, very shortly. Um, but having that communication channels to give you that last mile has allowed generations previously locked in their ways of going to a physical store to invest time, effort and experience into actually building out their own digital journey and building out their own experience using digital devices to do discovery, education, purchase and post-purchase. And marketplaces themselves provided a fantastic place to deliver that, but the most important element that the marketplaces and brands that had embraced digital experience delivered was that last mile. Customer experience, your orders on the way, confirmation, this is when it will be delivered, have it ready. And so as we look to kind of develop out and to change and enrich how we look to the next two years, three years and beyond, customer experience needs to be at the heart of what we deliver. We've now got generations of people that may not have invested in buying online, now expecting a level of service. The bar has been set. As merchants and retailers and agencies alike, when we're building and developing e-commerce experience, we need to recreate that physical experience online and equally recreate what the marketplaces and others in that place have set as the gold standard for customer communication. Customer communication being personalized, an experience that's delivered to that individual that gives them the information knowledge they need right there and then without having to search it out. I want the push notification to say my order's on the way. I want you to tell me after I've bought a product that this is something you might be interested in. I want it to be related to what I've bought before. Ultimately, we're all human beings. And when we look at the 
various different tactics that we put together to look at conversion and engagement, we need to be thinking, how would I want this experience? And that experience comes through personalization. It comes through re-engagement and it comes through a strategy that's developed around an individual and their expectations and where they are now. When we look at experience, we need to remember with the products that are being built today don't fare the same way as they've done previously. Light bulbs themselves have gone through a generational change. Here's one that's still going after over 100 years. And I remember 15, 20 years ago, the bulbs that I used to put in blew every three to four months. Nowadays, that focus on obsolescence has gone. And actually, we focus on how long something will last. That generational shift has changed once again. And so because the products themselves are getting better and the products themselves are being delivered in a way, the way to differentiate ourselves when we are in a competitive market as retailers is down to experience. There is really no better example of customer experience and how you go through that than someone like Apple. Being it their retail stores are not retail stores, they're customer experience centers. Come try the product, come talk to our team. I went to Apple just a few weeks ago and there was an, uh, an event going on where a lady was explaining how to use your phone, how to take the best pictures. These are the tips and tricks on how to use it. Retail for Apple was derived from the idea that this is an experience and a window for your customers to them as a brand. Connecting me as an individual when I walked into the store, connecting who I was to an individual, then connecting all of my previous history of orders so that when I walked into store, I had the same experience if I was online and I had that same experience of the products. And that connecting all of that data together to deliver a unified customer experience that personalizes that differentiating factor, which is service, which is how we work uh, to, with our customers, is where Dot Digital as an organization has been working for the past 21 years. We help merchants all across the world to deliver personalized customer experiences across the channels which they want to communicate with their customers. We've been doing this to help merchants all across Southeast Asia as part of our kind of deep-seated and integrated approach with the Adobe Commerce team and Magento. We've helped hundreds and thousands of merchants utilize our technology to build customer experiences that deliver value to the customer. And equally, through that value to the customer, deliver repeat purchases, deliver value back to that business. And within this, I wanted to kind of talk through a simple action. When you're building a Magento store, we tell merchants all across the world, set up your abandoned cart. By setting this up, it doesn't matter what industry you're in, you will generate revenue. By generating this content, you can then personalize with the products that I've been looking at. We can differentiate it because, you know, if that product's out of stock, you don't send a cart abandonment email. Having that positive customer touch points, hey, you've left this. Is there anything I can help with? You don't have to go with a discount. Many individuals actually just want someone to talk to providing inbound channels like live chat to answer complicated questions that we might have been able to answer within a retail store. Online, we have the technologies that allow you to connect with your customers. And when you use Magento, you can activate live chat today, okay? As long as you're using 2.2, sorry, 222 upwards, you can utilize Dot .digital's live chat free of charge with one user license. Just Follow the little instructions on the right, and you can activate this today on your e-commerce store. Start by building a relationship with your customer that they would get if they walked into a physical store. And you can do this if you're a B2B, B2C, if you've got multi-store, Dot .digital is here within the core code of Magento to provide you not just the engagement cloud marketing automation, but an award-winning live chat functionality that will help you deliver value back to your customers that are shopping on your website. And that's at the heart of what we as dot digital deliver we deliver customer experience and engagements across the different life cycle whether it's collecting data when someone arrives on the website sns retargeting all the way through to those abandoned card win back uh, programs that i mentioned from someone just on your site now getting awareness who are you who are you as a brand all the way through to that loyal customer there's different parts of our platform than app that will allow you to drive a journey with your customer automatically that delivers value. Apologies for the <clears throat> quite blurry picture here. I found this from our, our friends over at Brand IQ because I've 
when we look at how different technologies are interlinked together, there's industries all around Indonesia that have got over 100% more data, more information, and more customer touch points than they had 12 months ago. And that's because the rise in online purchases means that we collect more data. And there's data that's sat within your Magento site today that's ready to be unlocked. Being able to see who those top customers are, what are they likely to buy next, using machine learning to deliver product recommendations. All of this drives different engagements and positive experiences. I'm particularly interested in the 1,243% increase in party supplies being the number three in fastest growing category. Uh, but there's also things like food supplements, books, music, a huge area of growth, but equally an area in which we can provide enriched journeys. I love some of our merchants because I can actually work with them to get, and the team can work with them to get the use of product recommendations. I am forever looking for the next book that I want to read. And so I buy from our merchants so that I get their emails with personalized recommendations. It's a simple way of when we connect all of this day together automatically. It takes a very short space of time. It's minutes to connect up each of the different touch points because we're into the core code of Magento. And by beginning the core code, we're already able to vendor bundle extension. It's an activation, not an integration. You yourselves can do it, and we then start enriching all the data and use that to then engage across multiple channels. So whether it is SMS, SNS, email, or those inbound channels like live chat and landing pages and popovers, each of these is a digital touch point that allows you to communicate with your clients. And when I talk about the digital touch points and going back to that expectation that's now been set by marketplaces, that expectation has been set to your consumers on your brand.com, I expect, hey, here is your product. This is when it will be shipped. I'll expect information, updates that allow me to know where I am within that purchase journey. You don't need to just use trans uh, you know, transactional SMS. You don't need to just use email. You can use push notifications, depending on the channel that you have had your clients opt in for. Ultimately, it comes down to your customer and how they want to receive it. This is a great example from Adobe Commerce customer, uh, Converse, a bit of a sneaker guy myself. So I love this example more so for how they use live chat to have a huge impact on their audience, to grow their database, but build that positive touch point. Being able to have, when you're trying out a shoe, is it a, you know, long, is it wide? What fitting is it like? What's it like to walk in? The staff that are sitting within your retail operation who may not be there uh, at this time, can be the best people to know your products. And you can use those individuals on your online website, on your brand.com to deliver that same value they would do in a physical store while your customers are online. And, I, and one thing I like to talk through about uh, Melvin here, Melvin loves being able to see within the platform that he's who those champion customers are. Who are the ones that keep coming back to buy from their brand? Also, who are those ones on the website right now who are looking for a product but aren't quite purchasing? Being able to build an automatic segment of individuals that are showing that strong first purchase. Because once I know who they are, I've got a solution that gives me those product recommendations to tell me what they'll buy. And then we can automate that journey in a drag and drop builder to communicate. And doing this, we're, we're automatically getting to the point where we know our customers better. And this is out of the box. This is out of the box with Magento, you activate it, and we can start generating reports and dashboards for you. It just does it as part of the, the solution. And with that, we can then start with the teams and experts that we have around region, and especially here in Indonesia, is to then build different programs, campaigns that will drive, not just that revenue increase, but that better customer experience. And so, one of the kind of key elements is we, you know, Dot Digital has been part of the core code now for, for many years within Magenta. It's a partnership that's been for, for oh, quite a number of years uh, beyond that. And where we've seen the kind of connectivity and where we've seen the benefits to merchants, merchants love the platform because it allows them to scale their business. It allows them to grow and gives them insight that they hadn't had before into the customers that are on their site. Being able to link up multiple stores from around the region, uh, being able to integrate with multiple different currencies. We've also translated the platform entirely into multiple different languages. 
allowing merchants, you know, from a usability perspective to have multiple different individuals use the platform day in, day out in their language. It enables them to be faster, smarter, better at their job to deliver that value back to the customer. And beyond the actual integrations, beyond the kind of translations, the platform itself is supported in region by experts that um, can help you get the most out of the platform. The team at Circlo are absolutely fantastic. Muliadi, Ayu, and the team, thank you so much for putting on the event today. Um, I think one of the elements that partnership brings is being able to provide knowledge and experience and a format in which we can communicate to help enrich the journeys that customers go through. As I mentioned before, you know, we've got a huge opportunity that's standing before us. The benchmark for digital experience has been set. Marketplaces are doing this day in, day out, and they're, they're using that to their advantage as customers go um, crazy for, for kind of that experience. As we look at our own brand.com, this opportunity stands with us today to build out an experience that will drive them to keep coming back to you. I hope you found the session useful. Thank you for the team for uh, the time today to speak. Uh, and if there's any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Equally, the team are around today. And as I mentioned, the team at Circlo, the guys at e-commerce and Command are around as well, should you have anything that we can help with. Sure. Thank you so much, Matthew. We do have one question right here. I mean, it's about the adoption, right? I think for the past one and a half years, everybody is actually adapt in very quick pace after the pandemic hit. So what is the first initiative or adoption from, from Dot Digital after the pandemic hits in order to you know, read the unexpected customer buying behavior? I think the expectation, we, we still have an opportunity to look and to listen. Um, I'm a big advocate of uh, using surveys and asking your customers what do they want. Um, there's nothing more psychologically beneficial between a merchant and customer relationship than communicating with them about what it is that you, they want from you. Uh, a lot of our merchants try, uh, a lot of our merchants are adopting uh, product recommendations to deliver that one-to-one -one experience. They're adopting live chat to provide that in-store experience on their brand.com site. They're providing different methodologies and even looking at that checkout process to offer alternative payment options. But the one thing for me, uh, when, when kind of merchants have done all of that, um, is talk to your customers as you would talk to a friend. Um, I would love to get, you know, our customers very soon, fingers crossed, in a room and listen, learn, ask questions and ask the difficult questions. Why do you like our brand? What don't you like? Um, give people the option, give them a forum to talk to you um, and you'll learn more than looking at a database or a spreadsheet. Right. Thank you so much for the answer, uh, Matthew. I think everyone, if you still have any questions for Matthew, definitely just uh, talk to him through the Hubilo platform. Stephanie, thank you very much. And everyone enjoy the rest of the day. And to the Circlo team, thank you for putting on once again a fantastic Meet Magento. Thank you, Matthew. Have a great day. Bye. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>